Hello there, I'm Sandy Alnock, and I am excited to be back with Create in Color here on MFT. And I'm going to be using an image from a prior release, since there is no release this month, and showing you some tips that you can use, especially during this stay-at-home period. If you are locked in your house, you can't get out for supplies, I'm going to tell you some alternate things you can use for the items that I have shown here that I'm going to be using on my card using polychromos pencils, but you can use any brand. And this is a tea strainer. It comes on a handle, and this is just the tea strainer part that I've been able to pop off of mine, so it's easier to wield. But you can use any kind of tea strainer. Just make sure if you're going to use it for your tea that you clean it out really well and wash it nicely before moving on and drinking tea made with it. And I'm using a cotton ball to move the color around. Very simple technique to make skies and really soft backgrounds, that sort of thing. I'm doing it before coloring the image because then if I kind of go over the image a little bit with my cotton ball, it doesn't really matter because the colors are going to be more intense on the image, which I have stamped, by the way, in a light color. I want to make it look like no line coloring, and I used a darker color than you might want to if you want to have something that really looks like no, no, no lines at all but I'm using one that you can actually see the image so that you can follow along with where I'm coloring. I'm doing some greens down here in the bottom. I put two colors in there, just tap them out. Once, once the color got it, kind of got on the mesh, it helps to just tap the pencil on it to push the color out so you get more of it on the paper. And then I'm gonna do some traditional coloring with the pencils. I get my pencils nice and sharp and you can do that with a sharpener. You can also use sandpaper. I'll show you my sander in a little bit, but you can use that for your pencils as well as blending stumps. And this is a blending stump. Over on my channel, there's actually a video today showing you how to make your own blending stump. So if you don't have one and you can't get to a store, of course, since we can't go shopping, you can go and make your own blending stumps. And I'm gonna be doing my coloring, just layering the colors on here and using Gamsol to blend with, with that blending stump. Now, the Gamsol is something also that you would have to go to a store if you don't have any. Well, guess what? You can use baby oil. You might have some baby oil in your cupboard. If you have other oils, you could certainly try any sort of oils that you have in your house. Just be prepared for whatever results you might get. I haven't tried a whole bunch of them, so I don't really know. But the cool thing about blending solutions when you use them this way is the second layer of color goes on really nice. It tends to be much richer than it would be when you're just doing it on the paper for the first time. And then when you blend that on top, so you've got two layers of blended color, it really gets rich. So you can see that any of that blue or green from the background is easily covered up by this. No big deal at all. Now I did do one little thing in here that I oops, which was not to count how many of the red, blue, red, blue spots that I have. And I'm as I was doing this, I was thinking, okay, how am I going to fix this? Which way, which way do I color that one center section that's left? Well, when you're doing no line coloring, guess what? You can change it. So I decided to add another set of stripes in here, doing one red and one blue so that I could continue across here. That's what I get for not thinking. But when you're doing no line coloring, it's super easy. Even if you were doing no regular coloring, you could just draw a line down the middle there with a pen that matches whatever you stamped it with and change that up so you get the right number of stripes to have a striped airplane. And I'm just going around the rest of the image doing layers of color, doing the first layer of blending, and then the second layer is just much richer. I have, in the next section, I'll slow it down because I have a little, little, um, yeah, strange things going on. Something I tried that didn't actually work. I took my blending stump and made a little puddle of color over here on the side. I wanted a little blue river on the ground. That didn't come out that way. All I had was blending solution still left in my blending stump. So I decided I wanted darker color for one, but I needed to sharpen the blending stump. This is the sharpener that I told you about. It's basically a stick with stapled on uh, sandpaper. Like you just rub it on there until you get all the color off. You can sharpen it up a little bit. You can also make your own. As I said, I, this is over on my blog or on my YouTube channel today and on my blog if you wanna go find it. 
and I'll show you how to make one of your own. It's easy to do, but they're also like just a couple of dollars. So I find it easier to buy one than to <laughs> make my own because I'd rather spend my time coloring. But look how easy it is to then pick up the color from a piece of scratch paper and draw with it using the blending stump. Just picking it up and making those little, uh, I guess, fields, the lines for the fields when you're flying over something. But what I found I was getting now was this weird patchwork look. It didn't look like a unified thing down below. All the, the nice tight coloring above, I wanted it to soften. I wanted to blend it all. So I decided to grab my strainer and use some of those same greens to put more color over it. But instead of just using the cotton ball by itself to do the blending, I got it wet in that Gamsol solution. You can dip it into your baby oil and just went over the whole thing. And it left a little bit of the, the lines of the fields that I had made, but sort of blended the whole thing together so it looks much more in the distance, way down below. You can keep adding more layers of, of the color if you want more color down at the bottom. Notice that the scratch paper underneath ends up kind of stained with oil stains. That happens with either baby oil or Gamsol. So if you're trying to blend into white, it's a little harder to do when you're using Gamsol. You'll end up with kind of grease marks, but the pencil itself doesn't end up looking greasy as long as you stay within whatever areas you want to have color. And at the very end, of course, I had to add some white pen because white pen makes everything better, right? So thanks so much for joining me. I hope these tips help that you can find some things in your house to use in your colored pencil art. And I will see you again next month. Be safe, stay home, and I'll see you soon.